Good morning, everyone. My name is Lori Anderson, and I'm the program director for Pearl River Community College's Respiratory Therapy Program. I would like to welcome you all to the 2020 information session. And even though this format's a little bit different this year, I want you to all know that we are here for you in any way that we can be. I'll have contact information at the end of the slideshow, so please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or have any concerns or need us for anything. Um, we have three instructors in our program, myself, uh, Tina Mitchell is our Director of Clinical Education, and then Francis Wright is our third instructor. And so today I just want to talk to you a little bit about the profession of respiratory care, about the requirements for admission into the program, and a little bit about how our selection process works. And then I want to tell you a little bit about some of the rewards, rewards of our program in general, and then just rewards in the profession itself. So, would you like to be a respiratory therapist? Well, here are some questions that you can ask yourself. And if you answer yes to these questions, then maybe respiratory therapy is something for you. The first one is, do you enjoy helping others in a time of need? Well, let me tell you, respiratory therapist, um, we help others. And I'm sure a lot of you have been hearing about um, all the things that respiratory therapists are doing right now with this COVID-19. We are certainly on the front lines of this um, pandemic that's going on. But just in our, in our general everyday job, without what's going on in the world right now, you know, every day that we go to work, we are helping someone who cannot breathe. And that is such a rewarding job and such a great feeling that when you leave home and you, um, when, I'm sorry, when you leave work and go home every day, you know that you have helped someone. And it's just um, one of those things that you just can't you can't replace those kind of feelings of knowing that you your job really does matter to others. The next is, do you like working with technology? Um, respiratory therapists, um, we deal with mechanical ventilators. I know you've been hearing a lot about that. There's a shortage of mechanical ventilators. There's a shortage of respiratory therapists to run them. But our mechanical ventilators are extremely high um, technology machines and we're the ones that manage those machines we are the ones that make changes to them we're the ones that put patients on them we're the ones that take patients off of them so our our job is very um, highly tech technology driven do you like working in an environment where you can choose what kind of patients you want to work with or what area that you want to work in. Um, we work with all ages of patients. We work with the geriatric patients. We work with pediatric patients. We work with um, in the neonatal ICU with premature babies. So we're, we, we tend to take care of all ages. We work in all areas of the hospital. We're in the emergency room. We're in the intensive care units. We do air transport, ambulances. We work in, like I said, in the neonatal ICU. We work in the pediatric areas. Respiratory therapists do home care. We work in sleep labs. We work in rehab units, doctor's offices. You can come back and be an educator. Um, with what you get from your education here at Pearl River Community College. There's so much room for advancement. I graduated from Pearl River and I'm the program director. There are a lot of supervisors in local hospitals that graduated from this program. There are program directors. The, um, the director at Oshner's in New Orleans graduated with me from Pearl River Community College. So there's a lot of room for different things in your career if it's something you want to do. Um, do you like to travel? Um, I'm sure most of you have heard that nurses get to travel. Well, respiratory therapists can also travel. I've had several graduates through the years that have done travel in a lot of really cool places. I've had a graduate who's been to Alaska for six weeks. I've had graduates that have been in the Bahamas, in the Virgin Islands, Boston, New York, 
You can do local travel where you would just work in Mississippi or Louisiana and do some contract work there. And the pay is really good for, for all of those areas. So we have a lot of different things that we can do. We work with different types of patients. So we work with cancer patients. We work with our COPD patients, so emphysema or asthma patients. We work with patients who have had some kind of surgery. They don't want to breathe after surgery, so we go in and try to make them breathe to keep them from getting pneumonia. We work with um, patients who have had uh, hysterectomies or have had delivered babies and had C-sections where they have to go in and um, do breathing treatments with them. So there's just a wide variety of ages, diseases, types of procedures that we get to work with. Respiratory therapy responsibilities. We're taught to serve as a consultant to the physician in the treatment and management of cardiopulmonary abnormalities. Respiratory therapists also work very closely with our nurses in coordinating and implementing overall patient care strategy. Because of these two things, education has to provide a strong background in your communication, your biological and behavioral sciences, as well as math. Now, before you say anything, I know you all thought we're going to be respiratory therapists. We don't have to do math, but math is a very important part of what we do. We have to give medications. We have to do pharmacology formulas to make sure that we're giving the right percentages of medications along with normal saline. When we have patients on ventilators, we have to figure out what their compliance of their lungs is to make sure we're able to adequately ventilate our patients. So there is a lot of formulas. We look at oxygen transport. We look at um, many different things that involve formulas. So math is important. And we're not real good about letting you use calculators in class. So, you know, brushing up on your basic math skills is always an important thing to do. Communication is so important because of that daily, daily interaction that we have with our physicians. We not only want to teach you how to communicate professionally with physicians and other healthcare providers, but we also want to teach you correct medical terminology to make sure that when you are speaking with them that you're doing it correctly. Your biological sciences is important. Your anatomy and physiology class that you're taking just ties right into what you'll learn first semester in our program. Um, we have a cardiopulmonary anatomy and physiology class, so it just takes what you've already learned and takes it a step further. Same thing with behavioral sciences. Your psychology class, it's so important to understand, you know, how how the brain works in regards to psychology and behavioral sciences. So all of those things are very important in your education to become respiratory therapist. The respiratory therapy scope of practice, so the things that you would be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, that includes your medical gases. So we administer oxygen to patients who come in who are having difficulty breathing. We also administer heliox at times as well as nitric oxide. So we do different types of medical gases. Our aerosols, this is how we administer our breathing treatments that you probably have all heard about when we ask People, you know, tell us what you know about respiratory therapy. What do we do? Oh, they give breathing treatments. Well, aerosol is that format for giving those breathing treatments. We also do meter dose inhalers, your MDIs, and other types of things. So our medication, you know, we have bronchodilators that we give. That's what opens the airway. If a patient comes in wheezing, we give um, racemic epinephrine for someone who's having maybe a reaction, an anaphylactic reaction, and maybe their airway is kind of closing in on them so we can give that to open it back up. We provide ventilator assistance, so this is what you're hearing about right now in the news. You know, respiratory therapists are the ones who manage the life support. We're the ones that take care of the ventilator, and when a patient either can't breathe at all or is not breathing adequately on their own, so we're the ones that are going to put them on the ventilator. 
we're the ones that are going to make changes to the ventilator. So we're the we're the managers of that ventilator. Bronchial hygiene is another part of our day-to-day -day job. That's where we may provide suction for patients who aren't able to clear their own secretions. Maybe we do what's called CPT, where we do some vibration on the chest wall to help loosen up secretions so that a patient could better um, cough those secretions out. We teach basic life support. That's something that we do our CPR class. We do that the very first week of school for students. So you have to have that. And then in your third semester, we teach advanced cardiac life support. And that's where we take just the basic life support a step further. We teach you about recognizing the different heart rhythms. We teach you how to, what medications go with each heart rhythm. We teach you how to shock the patient if they need to be shocked. So that's um, just a step further, just a little bit more advanced than what you learn in the beginning. Respiratory therapists are involved with long-term care and rehab for patients. We provide maintenance of natural and artificial airways, kind of back with what I was talking about with um, a patient having an uh, anaphylactic reaction where the airway closes off. We may just need to put an airway in just to keep that airway open. Um, we may have to intubate a patient. And that's what we would do if they needed ventilator assistance. So all of those are things that we do with the airway. We also do specific testing for diagnosis. Um, that that would be like doing pulmonary function testing to determine if a patient has asthma and how well they respond to treatment. Or that's also how we would determine if a patient has emphysema. We do monitoring. We monitor oxygen status of patients. We do arterial blood gases. That tells us about the oxygen again. It also tells us about the CO2, the carbon dioxide of our patients. Are they, are they able to get rid of that um, CO2? We're also involved in treatment and research for patients. So we have a very wide scope of practice that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Pearl Rivers Respiratory Program, our accreditation status, we are accredited by COARC, which is the Commission on Accreditation for Respiratory Care. And you can find outcomes data from the latest annual report of current status is posted on our website, as well as on COARC's website. And I've included the link there if anyone would like to look at that. It just tells you, you know, that we've met our thresholds and, and that kind of information. So the respiratory program um, at PRCC, our selection process, we're going to talk just a little bit about that. So make sure you kind of take notes if you've got some questions about this that you can um, either email me or let me know your questions there. So our education requirements, we have a list of seven courses that we require as prerequisite courses. That's your anatomy and physiology one and two, and you have to have the labs with them. College algebra, English comp one, oral communication, behavioral or social science, so your psychology or sociology course, a humanities or fine arts elective. And then we have two classes that we highly recommend. And the reason for that is just we oftentimes have students that come to us and say, I need to be full time. Is there any other class that you would recommend I could take so that I could still be full time while I'm taking my prerequisites? And the two courses that we came up with that are your microbiology as well as your medical terminology, especially the medical terminology. If you don't have any background at all in any kind of health care, that class just really helps you with going going forward through the program, it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, as you can imagine, if you have no healthcare background at all, you know, day one, there's just words coming out of our mouth that you've never heard before. And so by having that little bit of background in medical terminology really seems to give um, people a leg up on that. So one thing I need to tell you about the prerequisites that's always a question before I move on to the next thing. And that is that as far as the prerequisite courses go, you can apply to the program 
even if you're not complete right now. What has to happen though is that if you were to get accepted into the program, it would be contingent on successful completion of any course you had left to take over the summer. So say you have taken everything except for anatomy and physiology two, and we accepted you into the program and then over the summer you take a and p2 you complete it with a c or higher then you're good to go to start the fall semester but if you have a and p2 and for some reason when you take it over the summer you don't do well you have to drop out or you make a d and you don't finish it with a C or better, then you would lose your position at the start of the fall and would not be able to start the program until next year. So you can apply, you can still have one or two courses to take over the summer. You just need to realize that they, they have to be finished before the start of fall semester. So that's one thing that's important for everybody to know there. So how does the process work? Um, the first thing you need to do is complete an online application to PRCC. So this only applies to someone who is not a current student at Pearl River. So if you're a current student at Pearl River, then you go to step number two, which is just completing the online respiratory therapy application. If you're not a current student at Pearl River, then you complete the Pearl River online application first and then once you get your information from Pearl River your login information then you would go in and complete the online respiratory therapy application number three there again if you're not a current Re Pearl River student then you need to have your transcripts sent to Pearl River through e-scripting same with your ACT scores but if you're already a Pearl River student, then we already have those two things. So you don't have to have those sent. You don't send those to the respiratory program. We can pull them from admissions. Um, what you need to send to the respiratory program, and you can send it through email, either to myself or my secretary, Sonetta Bolton. And I have our, both of our emails there. So what we need from you is a current picture. And then we need your midterm grades. If you're taking any of those seven classes right now, then we need you to send us your grades for those classes so that we can calculate your GPA. And we like to use this semester's classes in part of that calculation. So have those sent. They can either be, you can email that form to your teachers and they can scan them and send them back. Or you can just ask your teachers to email us directly what your midterm grades are for those classes. Now the last thing on this page um, is very very important. The deadline for application has been extended to May 11th 2020 so that's going to be a Monday and it'll be by the end of the day that day. I'm not sure at this time when we will do interviews. I think all of that's going to depend on how things are going in the Hattiesburg area in Mississippi with the coronavirus when they let us start getting back to some sense of normalcy. I'm also not sure if we'll do interviews in person or if they'll have to be in some kind of WebEx or Zoom type format. So um, what I can tell you is that you will receive a letter about an interview and in that letter, it will give you specifics as to how we're going to be able to do that at this time. But just know we've extended the deadline out 10 days just in case, you know, we, we just don't want to lose anybody in the shuffle of things kind of with the way things have been lately. So um, just make sure, like I said, if you have any questions, my email's there and then I have it again at the end. So just please reach out to me if you have questions on anything there. Okay, before I continue with the program requirements, one thing I left off from the previous slide is that the respiratory therapy online application, you can find that under the Wildcat web. So it's a little bit different where you find that. And I had failed to mention that to you. So back to prerequisite courses. Remember what I said, they have to be complete prior to the beginning of the first semester of the program. So 
We will interview you if you're not complete based on what your ACT is, your GPA, and how many courses you have left. If you came to me and you'd only taken two classes and you said, I want to start the program this fall, and you would have to take five classes over the summer, I would probably say to you, that's not a really good idea. Um, that's a lot of classes to take in the summer and would be very hard to do and, and be able to be successful in it. But if you're just missing one or two, then we have certainly um, accepted plenty of students in the past that have been able to, to do that and, and done well with it. Um, the GPA in the prerequisite courses, what we're looking for there is a minimum of a 2.5, but 3.0 is going to be our preferred number. Um, our program is very competitive and it's getting harder and harder to get into. You know, we usually interview somewhere between 40 and 50 applicants and we can only take two, I'm sorry, we can only take 20 students per year. Um, so it is competitive. Our average GPA over the last couple years has been about a 3.2. And remember, that's just in those seven courses. So if you, you know, want to figure out what your GPA is, you might want to look at that and just kind of see, you know, where you think you would fall. And I'm certainly willing to, to look at your courses and look at your GPA and kind of give you an idea of, you know, what your points would be for that. The ACT score, we don't put as much emphasis on ACT as we do your GPA, um, but there, but you do get some points for that. So our minimum with that is 16. We prefer an 18, but obviously the higher your ACT is, then the more points you're going to get. And remember with that, um, if you're already a Pearl River student, then we have your ACT scores. You don't have to send them to the program itself. The last thing on this page is um, just realize that just because you meet the minimum requirements does not guarantee any applicant admission into the respiratory therapy program. There again, we see a lot of patients. I mean, golly, y'all, I, I apologize. We see a lot of applicants every year and we only have a few spots. So we have to just we have to find that cutoff point. And it, it's a hard it's a hard place to find, but we have to find a, a cutoff point. So just because you meet the minimum requirements doesn't mean you'll get it in the program. And it doesn't always mean even that you'll get an interview. But we try to be as fair as we can with that. For students who are accepted into the respiratory program, it's important that you know what are the things that you're going to be required to do or to have as you progress through the program. So these things we'll talk about more when we have an orientation, which will be held over the summer. But I just feel like it's a good idea to give you a heads up so we, you're not having any surprises once you get accepted. So you have to turn in your immunization records. You would have to have a physical done by your physician. We require criminal history background checks of all of our students who are accepted. We do those through the school. You'll have to have proof of health insurance as well as vehicle insurance. These two items you wouldn't need until we get ready to start clinical. So probably December or January for those. You'll either have to start the hepatitis B series or you'd have to sign a declination that you don't want to have that. That's something that is recommended for all healthcare providers, but it's not something that we absolutely require. All of our applicants will have a drug screen done. That'll also be done probably at the orientation session or the beginning of the semester. All of our students are required to take flu shots. This is a requirement of our hospitals, not us. And so that's something that we'll do in the fall, as well as you'll have to have a TB skin test done. So there again, don't do any of these things now, except maybe start getting your immunization records together once you get accepted into the program. But it's just to let you know some of the things that you're going to have to be responsible for having, especially the health insurance and the vehicle insurance is something that, um, you know, students, some students have had an issue with in the past. So we just want to make sure that everybody knows that in order for you to do clinical rotations, you have to have both of those. And those are hospital requirements, not Pearl River requirements. This is just a little thing about the background check. 
that we have to put in for all allied health programs, just saying that they have to have background checks. Any student who does not um, have a clean background check would not be allowed to go to the hospitals. Therefore, they would not be able to take their position in the program. So now I want to talk to you just a little bit about the respiratory um, courses once you get into the program, kind of what that looks like as a, as a student, kind of what your course load is going to be like and some of the courses that you're going to take. So your first semester, fall semester, we are pretty much just in the classroom and the lab. So you'll have four classes. It equals to be 16 credit hours. We don't start clinical until January, so there's no clinical. So our class time is pretty much Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday all day long, 8 to 3-ish. And then on Thursdays is a lab day for you. And most days you're out of that by noon on Thursdays. And then we do not have any classes on Friday in the first semester. So pretty much lecture and lab. Monday through Wednesday all day, half a day on Thursdays. Second semester spring, you have also 16 hours. We have um, there again, our classes are going to meet on Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays in the spring semester. And this is where you start your first clinical class. And so the way that works is you'll have one 12 hour clinical rotation. And it will be either on a Thursday or a Friday. Um, typically, you're going to have more Thursdays than you do Fridays, but there are some Fridays that you have to attend clinical. Our clinical hours are anywhere beginning from 5.30 a.m. at some hospitals to as late as 6.30 or 7 at other hospitals. Like I said, we do one day a week, 12 hours. Um, in the summer, you do the same thing, one day a week for 12 hours, and in the very last fall semester, you do two 12-hour clinical rotations. While we're talking about clinical, the clinical sites that we use are Forest General, Wesley, or Merit Health here in Hattiesburg. We do Highland Community Hospital in Picayune, Marion General in Columbia. We go to South Central Regional in Laurel. We go to Singing River Hospitals, that's in Pascagoula and Ocean Springs. We go to Gulfport Memorial. We go to UMC in Jackson. We go to the Blair Batson Hospital. And we only do that in the fall semester, the very last fall semester, as well as a sleep lab and home health in that very last fall semester. So we, the way we do our clinical, we rotate all students through all sites. So it's not like we're going to assign you to one hospital and that's where you're going to be your whole clinical experience. So all of our students rotate through all of our different clinical sites. Summer semester, the way our summer is broken down in, the, in June of the summer, I teach the respiratory care technology course. And then in July, Ms. Wright teaches the neonatal and pediatric class. And then through the whole summer, June through July, you do clinical practice two. There again, one 12 hour shift per week, either on a Thursday or a Friday. And then the fourth semester, which is your last semester, that would be fall of 2021 if you're accepted into this year's class. You'll have one class here at the school. It meets on Mondays and Tuesdays. That's the respiratory care seminar course. And what that is is just a class that gets you ready for your board exam. So it's a lot of test taking, a lot of quizzes, just a lot of practice on mock board exams. And then this is where we have clinical three and clinical four, like I said previously, which will be two 12-hour clinical rotations per week. And we do those either a Wednesday and a Thursday or a Thursday and a Friday or possibly a Wednesday night if you're doing sleep lab and then a Friday. But we try to keep you two days back to back for those classes. So. Students who graduate from our program, remember our graduation is in December, and all of our graduates are eligible for the National Board Exams, and that's put out by the NBRC, National Board for Respiratory Care. 
Mississippi has licensure law that states that respiratory therapists must pass their national board's um, exams to maintain a license. In Mississippi, you can get a temporary license right before graduation. Usually the Mississippi Department of Health comes and they um, give those licenses out. Well, they don't give them, you pay for them. But they come and, and administer the licenses. They're good for six months, which gives you time to work while you're taking your exams. But if you have not taken your test or you have not passed it at the end of that six months, then you are no longer able to work until you have completed that process. So the way the national board's exams work, um, <clears throat> it's put out by, like I said, the NBRC. There's two different types of exams. The first exam is the TMC, which is the therapist multiple choice exam. So it's a multiple choice exam that has about 160 questions on it. And when you get your scores back on that, it has two different cut scores. So you have a low cut score, which is the bare minimum you can get to become a certified respiratory therapist. The higher cut score, which I think is only about six points higher, it's not a very big difference, would allow you to be eligible to take the clinical simulation exam. And then what the clinical simulation exam is, is it's what kind of gets you that higher level of respiratory therapy. So the minimum for license in Mississippi is that CRT. So that's passing that exam at that lower cut score. To become a registered respiratory therapist is an important part of our program. We're an advanced level program. And so because of that, all of our graduates are expected to become registered respiratory therapists. So one of our new thresholds, one of the new things that we're being graded on is how many of our students are passing that TMC test at that higher cut score. So that's going to be important. So you have to pass the TMC at the high cut score, which makes you eligible for the clinical simulation exam. And then you would take the clinical simulation exam. And if you pass it, you would become registered. So what the clinical simulation exam is, it's still computerized, but it's basically where you would have a scenario. So, you know, you're on the computer, you read a paragraph, it says, you know, a 70 year old patient comes to the emergency room, you know, short of breath, um, fever, cough, what do you want to do? And so then it gives you a list of things that you can choose from. So you, you know, you say, okay, well, I want to check their vital signs. And so you would select vital signs and then it would tell you about all their vital signs. And you say, well, I want to look, listen to their breath sounds. And so you click breath sounds and it tells you that. And so you do all this information gathering. And then once you've gathered the information, you're going to go to the next screen. It's going to say, okay, now that you've done your assessment, what do you want to recommend? So does the patient need to be um, a, get a breathing treatment? Do they need to be put on some oxygen? Do they need to be put on a ventilator? So it's just kind of how we manage our patients from beginning to end. And that's what the clinical simulation is. And you have different types of patients. You'll have some COPD patients. You'll have an asthma patient. You'll have a kid. You'll have an adult. You'll have a trauma. Uh, typically, there's going to be some kind of motor vehicle accident that you'll have to deal with. So it just kind of takes you through through those steps of taking care of those patients. So once you pass that clinical simulation e exam, then you become a registered respiratory therapist. And so, you know, that's a very important part of what we are and how we how we so part of the importance of it, um, there again, because we're an advanced level program, all of our graduates are expected to become registered therapists. And because of that, they recently, um, it's been several years ago now, but they've, they've given a deadline. So graduates now have three years to become registered therapists if they're graduating from advanced level program. So what would that mean for you? Um, if you do not become registered in that three years, then you lose your MBRC credential. And so what that would mean to you is possibly losing your job, possibly taking a pay cut, 
but more importantly, it would mean you would have to retake your TMC exam. You would have to pass it at the higher cut score again, and then retake your clinical simulation exam to get registered so that you can get your credential back. Um, a lot of hospitals pay more for registry than they do for certi certified therapists. Locally, it's not as much as it is in other places. Some hospitals that I know of pay up to $4 more an hour to registered therapists versus what they pay their certified therapists. So not only is it a sense of self-worth, but in something that you should achieve and something you should strive for, but you know, it, it means money in your pocket in a lot of places too. So it's very important that all of our grads try to become registered therapists. You do not want to have to go retake that test again once you have done that the first time. Let's get it done. Let's finish it right after school. You're as, you're as prepared as you can be when you graduate. So that's the time to go ahead and take those exams. And Statistically, I can show you where the longer you wait to take those tests, the harder they are to pass. Some of our professional organizations, the AARC is our American Association for Respiratory Care. I've provided the link there for that. It's a really good resource for just things about the career. You can find jobs there. You can find all kinds of resources there once you get into the program. So it's a it's a really good. That's kind of our advocate. That's who who fights for our jobs, who works with our legislators and our senators to try to make sure that we're, you know, respiratory therapist job is is intact and that, um, you know, we maintain good status. And there again, the National Board for Respiratory Care, that's kind of our testing agency, and they have good information on their website as well. Some of Pearl River respiratory program rewards, some of the things that we can brag about as a program ourselves. Um, as long as I've been here and been the director of the program, we've met all of our accreditation thresholds. So what that means is maintaining good job placement is the first one. We have hospitals from all over that come and recruit our students. They come bring them lunch. They come bring them goodie bags. We have hospitals from Baton Rouge, from Hammond, from Oshners in New Orleans, the Coast Hospitals, Blair Batson in Jackson, Baptist Hospital in Jackson. We've had hospitals from Mobile and Birmingham come and recruit our students. Our program is a very good program and, and a lot of people recognize that. People who hire our students always call us to say, we want more of your students. So that's a good thing for y'all. We have 100% job placement of our students. The ones that want jobs are gonna get jobs. Most of them always have jobs before they graduate. So that's always a good thing um, for us to brag about. So that's our, our job placement. Retention in the program. Typically we start with about 20 students every year and we generally graduate somewhere between 18 and 20. Right now, we still have 20 students in our freshman class, and um, we hope that we should graduate 20 out of this class. Our exam passing rate is very high. We have um, in the upper 90s on our on our exam passing rate, so that's always a good a good thing for us. And then our graduate and employer satisfactions. So what that is is after students graduate about six months out we send surveys to their employers and then we send surveys to the graduates themselves and what what those surveys ask is you know were these graduates prepared for the job do you feel like they got the education do you feel like their time management was good you know were they prepared to come and work for you and then the same thing same kind of questions to the graduates do you feel like you were prepared you know, what are areas that we can improve on? And so those have always come back 100% um, satisfaction for, the, for our graduates. So that's one thing that we're very, very proud of in our program. Some of the respiratory therapy statistics. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median salary is $60,280 or around basically around $29 per hour. I looked it up and the top the top 25% 
of salaries is about almost $73,000 per year, whereas the lower 25% is um, around 50, a little over $51,000 a year. So, um, so that's good. It's a good yearly salary. You can make a living off of that. So that's a real exciting thing. Our job outlook is expected to grow by 21% over the next 10 years. So that's more, much faster than the average for all occupations. And then currently there's over 134,000 jobs available. Y'all, that's not today with coronavirus issues. That's before all this. So, you know, it's more than that today because there's just not enough of us to go around and, and, and carry the extra loads that people are needing right now. Um, as far as salaries go, um, you know, some of the other other programs that Pearl River offers, the PTA salaries, I think their median salary is about 55000 Radiology is 56. Dental assisting is around 36. So we're very competitive with the other programs. We're higher than some, maybe a little lower than some, but it's it's a really it's a really good salary and really good benefits. Um, the second thing on this is, according to the U.S. News, respiratory therapy is in the top 20 for best health care jobs that are available, and we're ranked number 40 in the top 100 best jobs overall. So I think that's some pretty exciting, exciting things about the profession as respiratory care as a whole. So I told you I would make sure that you all had my contact information. So there's my email address as well as my uh, phone number to my office. So even though I'm not working from my office, I can get access to my voicemail. So if you either email me or call me and leave a message, I'll be happy to call you back. Send me an email, put your phone number in there, I'll call you. Sonetta Bolton is our secretary, and I've got her email address there as well, and her phone number, same thing. She's more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. I also decided to open up my little personal WebEx room um, so that I'll be available for questions. So I'm going to do that from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock on April 22nd. April 29th and May 6th. So those are all Wednesday afternoons from 2 to 3. I've put the link there. You can type it in or I don't know if it'll let you just click on it or not to go into that into my personal room during those times. But I just thought that would be a way that if you have questions and you, you just want to kind of see me face to face that I will be available to do that. You can also join by phone. There's the phone number and the access code and the PIN number if you if you want to do that. But even if you just want to join in and just introduce yourself and say, hey, and, and, you know, if you don't have questions. But, you know, that's kind of the one thing that I miss with this not having this information session in person. It seems like I always say, are there any questions? And nobody really wants to raise their hand and ask questions. But then when it's over, I have a line of people that that want to ask questions and so like I said I want everybody to know that that we're here for you and we we do want to answer any questions that you have and we want to help you through this process um, the best way that we can so I look forward to some of you logging in on those days it may be that if you log in and I'm in the middle of something with somebody I'll just ask them, do you mind if this other person joins in? Or I may tell you to wait five minutes, but we'll, we'll figure it out. I think it's going to be fine. Um, I'll, I'll be in my, like I say, I'll be open from two to three on those days. So um, please let me know if you need anything at all. And like I said, I look forward to you coming into my little WebEx room on those days so that I can hopefully answer questions that you that you may have. This last little thing is just something I added. It just kind of, I don't know, just something I just felt like was important. And that's just the respiratory therapy in the midst of this COVID-19. And they, I just attached some different links just talking about respiratory therapists and how involved we are in response to this. And, you know, it's just got a few good little articles there I thought might be important to just to kind of show you that um, right now we're we're in the front lines um, 
and hopefully, you know, many of you will be able to join us and, and that's going to be a good and rewarding thing going forward. So that's all I have for this information session. Again, I look forward to meeting you all and hopefully we'll um, get to pick 20 really great students. And so just keep in touch with me, email me, call me, join my WebEx um, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great day.